Hello and welcome back to the Click Wars podcast. Jamie, how's it going, brother? You well? I'm very good, very good. We spoke with Jaume Roz this episode, the one of the funniest people I've met in SEO. So I've met him in real life. We had a good fun time, lots of drinking and partying involved. And so it made sense to bring back both someone who brings a wealth of SEO experience, but also we, that we know it's going to be a great bit of banter and a chat with. So talking about how he ruthlessly betrayed Ahrefs in his merciless <laughs> pursuit of clout in <laughs> going to SEMrush and uh, eventually his own tool, which is going to take over the market as well. Uh, as well as his SEO career, the real power of a personal brand and the doors of that opened even as early as it did before he was as big as he was. Um, and everything in between, really, really action packed episode, densely packed with information, as well as a good bit of banter. And I think this is going to be a top rated episode, to be honest. I completely agree. The stuff on YouTube as well was absolutely mind blowing in the way that he's utilizing that to grow his personal brand, but equally as well, he'll leverage that for his stats tool, which is coming out soon. Yeah, really great episode. So let's get started on the Click Wars podcast. So this week's episode is sponsored, the first ever sponsor on the podcast, which I think the uh, allure was. So thank you. Shout out to Viper Chill Glenn Allsop for this one. Glenn, just wanted to be our first sponsor ever on the podcast. So all we'll say is the domain detail.com and that will be the shortest sponsor message you'll ever hear. Now, I'm not going to stop there. That's all Glenn DM'd me to say. Uh, I just wanted to give a big shout out to Glenn because he's reached out several times in my SEO career. If you don't know who Glenn is, you should because he's like an OG, like one of the most talented people in the game. And um, so he's been helpful. He's been like, he's with not asking for anything, always been a great source of, of, of information and help. And so I'm very grateful to his his knowledge and insight over the, the short time I've been in SEO. He's also got a fantastic course, which I paid for. It's not open at the moment, but I just want to seed that, that seed in your mind. The SEO Blueprint is one of the best courses around. It's really good. I've personally used it to get results. I used it when I was trying to do some local SEO, which I don't usually do for a family member's site. So even though... Um, I'm not really a local SEO and some of the other modules, especially the super pixels, just wowing people with branded extra care on different UX and UI elements is, uh, is, is the main perhaps reason to go into the course. Even the modules that you might not think will be as valuable or excellent. So while it's not open now, uh, it will be open in the future. And I personally vouch as a paying customer for Glenn's course that it is excellent. So thank you very much for sponsoring Glenn and uh, for showing your support on just the third episode. <laughs> Yeah, so I've been sessioning your YouTube today, Harmi. It's good, yeah. man. Yeah, appreciate it, dude. Yeah. So you have some news? <laughs> no, it's just I uh, I might be making videos for for the for for Samrush, which is funny because I was just on the on the Ahrefs channel and uh, this and it's not trail not for any of particular the century in digital marketing. This is going to go down in like all time. <laughs> betrayal anime betrayal you know what it is dude it's just SEO. <laughs> i atrips and i we we like couldn't agree on on a few things and so on the we, massive we... paycheck that you demanded <laughs> <laughs> you wanted a free rider flown out to every single event private uh, jet sushi and caviar listen so much um, you gotta keep moving forward, dude. You just gotta keep. <laughs> you gotta keep grinding, dude. And uh, Samrush came in clutch, and uh, and uh, we'll see. So, uh, hey, I'll slut drop for any sponsorship on YouTube. Mate. No, <laughs> absolutely no problem at all. Yeah. You pay that cash, I'll drop that ass. That's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The funny thing is, they were like, "We're gonna send you a shirt." Because I don't know if you have a Samrush shirt. And I was like, "I don't have a Samrush shirt. Send me that shit, dude." Fucking Samrush. Anyway, did you have to put it over the Ahrefs shirt? Yeah, we're just both wrapping into the time, video yeah. you were recording oh, 30 dude. seconds prior. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway. Anyway, how are you guys? How are you guys doing today? Good, man. Good. Yeah. Just about recovered from when we were out partying in Birmingham. Literally, oh, I had about a five day recovery after that one. I'm getting, as I get older, like yeah. I can't, like I get like the three, four day hangovers now, especially when like we were doing like three, four days in a row. It's like every action has an opposite reaction. And it yeah. was like a big, big one, man. Yeah, but it's, it's interesting because you guys drink a fuck ton. Like, so <laughs> I think, I think people in Spain, like we, we party a lot. 
but it's just like the level of drinking that you guys have is mad. It's like you you guys went out like three nights in a row, and I can't do that. Like I'll go one night, I'll go hard. I'll like make sure all my brothers eat. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean. But then it's like when I can't do that mouthful. again. Like I need to take a rest for like a year, dude. Maybe not a year, but you know what I mean, dude. I need to chill the fuck out. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah, you guys Mate, after hard. affiliate gathering, me and Jay uh, and a few others went so hard. I was broken for like a week, man. And that was yeah. the catalyst for me. I was like, I can't do two nights in a row. It's like, I can just about get through one these days. But we're like, yeah, man, I feel it. I, I'm so gutted I missed Search Birmingham. The more I hear about it, it just seems like such yeah, a sick dude. event. Um, yeah, it was really good. Yeah. It was It was strange because, and sorry, I hate to just rub it in a little bit more, Sammy, but uh, <laughs> it was it. like, it was just this really strange collection of like, and I've been to a bunch of events, but like, all the people there, I felt like, dude, they all had like a little bit of something extra to add. And I don't know, dude, I fucking every single person, every every person I spoke to, I was I was learning something from them. And I don't know, they were doing some crazy shit. And it's just it's mad, dude. It's really, really it seemed good. like the Titans were there, isn't it? Like, there yeah, for sure. Crushes there. Like, for sure. Dude. Unbelievable crush. For sure. And it's and it's intimidating. Also, it's like you sit at a table and I got I was lucky because I got placed in uh, I was sitting at the table with the founder of Empire Flippers. And oh, this guy is just like, yeah, so we had this offer to sell the company for 60 million. And I'm like, what the fuck did you just say to me? You know, it's like, <laughs> how are we in the same conversation? You know, it's like, I'm thinking about my YouTube channel, about like my little website, my clients. And this guy is just like, it's crazy, but it's super inspirational, right? It's like stuff like that that you need to 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 make you like think bigger and, and, and do crazier things. So it was really good, dude. Mate, anyway. surround yourself with... The people that you want to be like and you end up becoming them you, yeah you, you, yeah, yeah. You, you just you're you, you you are a fucking sponge like exactly, that's yeah. the way i see it like you know me chatting to jay for the last like years broadened my fucking horizons on affiliate marketing to levels yeah. that i never knew were possible so like yeah. you know what i mean like it's it's one of yeah. those things and, not and to this, rub his big head in it or anything no but, uh, and let me, let me rub it <laughs> let me rub it a little bit more because i was sitting i was sitting i knew this i i think i knew you th um through twitter or i'd seen your profile or something and um and we were in a cab or something and you were like yeah the site's making this much this is and i'm like What's going on, dude? What the <laughs> fuck is like? What am I doing? What have I been doing this whole time? You know? And you said something that I think I'm gonna, I'm not gonna forget ever. You were like, yeah, I've only been doing it for like two or three years. I'm like, what the fuck is going on in this? I don't know, dude. It's too much. It's too much, dude. Guys <laughs> are like, money in this game. Overpaid. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> anyway, I'm proud to be overpaid. I don't yeah, ever want to say that it's. Like we deserve, like we chat shit on the internet and we blog. Like it's not like that deep. Do you know what I mean? Like, but no, it's good no. fun. I love it. I'm very protective over it, but it's like, uh, yeah, uh, it's all good fun in it. You can't take it too serious. No, 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 absolutely not. But yeah, it was really good. Anyway, we can we can stop talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was just such. Like, I was taking Sammy home, literally, and I I, I I I mean to phrase it like that because on the day after, um, at the end of a, a, a affiliate gathering in York, Sammy was done for and he was talking Mate. about going out with some friends in london that night after and I, was like, I don't know what it is right but every seo i meet gets on the session like nobody's <laughs> business mate there's something about seos and like just getting destroyed for five nights <laughs> yeah. straight mate it's because you don't come out the house for like fucking 11 months of the year <laughs> yeah, you let us out of the house for like a caged animal ready yeah, to roll right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's exactly it God damn. Oh, man. this is going down as like the my favorite start to a podcast in a long time so <laughs> yeah I'm, Just, I'm enjoying this fuck. we'll have to go out as a group again at the next event or if you're ever in london mate we'll, we'll, we'll organize yeah. another one because that was yeah. such good fun in birmingham and that i need it i need to prep for that dude i need to like <laughs> yeah, go to the sauna or something <laughs> and that's what you do after to so get it out <laughs> true i'll do both yeah. i'll do the before and after <laughs> the cleanse <laughs> Nice, man. So what have you been up to since then? What's the big, obviously you mentioned the Semimosh work. Uh, this won't come out for like probably four weeks. So you can say stuff if you're like, oh, yeah, perfect. You scrub it if like you don't, like if it's not time or whatever. But perfect, um, perfect. what else have you been up to since, man? Yeah, so I've just been, I mean, my main thing is, is this YouTube channel. Like I've been, I've always been trying to like build little things. And in, in, when I was at uni, I studied in, in Vancouver and I had a little like, uh, 
a food delivery startup before Uber Eats got to got to Canada. And so after that, I did some drop shipping, and then I kind of got tired of like spending money online, and I did like the classic like, oh, how can I make money for free? And I found SEO, and so that kind of started like my client game. Worked at a startup for a bit, um, and then started the channel. And then the channel has just been this like infinite pool of like gold. And I and I, I literally every single person I meet, I'm like, you need to make a YouTube channel because it's <laughs> fucking crazy. Like people will just throw money at you because they see your face on the internet explaining something. And so that's the main thing that I'm doing. The main thing I'm doing is I'm just like, I'm doubling down on this channel. Um, I was lucky enough that, that I was able to have a talk. Well, so here, let me, let me rephrase that. Basically like through the channel, everything, like there's so many opportunities that have come through. Like I get random access to people. Like I was able to just have an interview with Matt Diggity. And then he just like stayed on the call and we talked about stuff. You know, it's like, just random things like that happen. I was able to talk to Sam O and then he was like, oh, you should come on the Ahrefs channel and like make some videos. I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? What are you talking about? So, so yeah, so I'm like full time on YouTube. Um, and then I also obviously have clients that come through YouTube. Um, I'm also building a little uh, SaaS. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, again, through YouTube, one of the main things that, that I've seen, a lot, I get a lot of comments and, and like, emails from people. And one of the main things that I get is like, do you know of any alternative to Ahrefs and to Uber? And so, and so, yeah, so one of the main messages that I get is like, can you suggest any, like any really good SEO tools apart from Ahrefs and SEMrush that are, that are affordable. And to be honest, the only one that I could suggest is Uber suggest. That's, that's the one that's owned by Neil Patel, mm -hmm. but that guy is making enough money as it is. So. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to give him any more. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I just decided to build one. And so I'm, I'm in the process of building one. Obviously it's, it's, it's like, it's pretty brutal work. Uh, it's a lot of data. Um, but it's cool, dude. It's cool. And people are interested. And so that's kind of what I'm doing full time now. Most of the people who tell me they've got this new project going on, it's interesting. And I always, I'm always so curious to understand everything, mm -hmm. but, uh, often I think, okay, that's cool, but it's not for me. Um, when you were explaining when I met you back in Birmingham, what it would do, especially with relations to like the e-commerce style, checking where you are on a page rather than just the page itself. It was one of the rare ones where I was like, that should exist. Like that should be a thing. And like, it like the tracking, like, you know, like on a, almost on a PR front. And so I was really interested mm -hmm. by that. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how you can track all those things there. Cause I can already think of the, and I sent you a screenshot recently of the things that I was trying to track from looking yeah. at some of the, the best articles and seeing where Lasso was and stuff. So um, I think it looks like a cool project. What's the plan for it? When's the release date? Will it be out by the time this comes out? <laughs> I hope so. Dude. I hope so. The thing is that the actual, actually the, so the plan was to have all like the five, the five main tools. So it's like keyword research, like a site stat type of breakdown of, all the traffic and all that of, of a website, a bit of a deeper backlink analysis, a site audit, and then the rank tracker. Now the rank okay. tracker for me is the hardest one to build. Yeah. Um, so I'm struggling a lot with that. So I decided to not include that in the beta because otherwise it was going to take too long. I just want to like, I just want to launch it, see if people are down to pay for it. And then if people are down to pay for it, then I'll continue and I'll, <clears throat> and I'll build more things. Right, so I everyone, listen, ignore that because the bit that I just always say isn't coming out. <laughs> no, it's it's going to come, and obviously, it's like if I'm going to build an SEO tool, it has to have a rank tracker, and that's that's one of the things that I'm most excited about because yeah, because because why not? I mean, it's it's super useful, right? But it's um, I feel like the other four were a bit easier to build and very very core, right, to like a usual like SEO, um, and so we're going to test that, launch the beta, and then just get feedback, just see if people like it, if they fuck with it. Um, there's like 300 plus people on the wait list, which is really cool. Again, nice. it's all through YouTube. It's just like, I will wear the clicks shirt and then I'll just be like, there's a wait list. And people will be like, fuck, let's get to the wait list. You know, it's just like, it's really cool. So, um, I just signed up, man. So yeah, oh, fuck. 300, 301 baby. <laughs> Too let's much go. pressure, dude. <laughs> fuck <laughs> me. No, but, no, Jamie, but to be fair, when you sent me that message, I was like, yeah, fuck, I really need to speed things up, dude. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, so how, how does it differ to to, um, to uh, Spencer's new tool, Rank Logic? I don't know. I don't know what tool that is. So I can't. Oh, tell okay. you. What does it do exactly? So the, no, they um, it doesn't have the keyword research analysis side of stuff. Um, it's a WordPress plugin where you can track uh, bulk peer. So let's say you had a writer working on 
uh, a, you know, a silo or you had AI content and you wanted mm -hmm. to track the progress of that piece batch of content, then you can see where they're at and how they performed in the SERPs over a period of time, which I thought was really, is, 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 is that, that for me was like, yeah, it's pretty really cool. interesting because it's and fucking categories. hard to do that on there. Uh, yeah, so you can do by category. You can basically yeah. pre-select anything based on a silo or a writer or if it's AI written or not. And you can tag it up and then see it in a really cool report. Um, yeah, I just thought it was a thought it was a cool thing. Um, yeah, might be, might be worth checking out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will. No, the my main thing was that I just I wanted to build like as complete of a tool as possible in like a very affordable price point. And then it's a tough question because it's like, is there value in like trying to search for the cheaper customer? You know, it's like, obviously these, the Ahrefs and SEMrush, the fucking Mazes of the world, these guys are just killing it, selling like $300 a month plans to every agency, every, every marketing person in the world. Right. And that's where the money is. But from just from, from what I've, from the feedback that I get from my channel, I get a lot of people that are beginners and a lot of beginners just can't afford these massive tools, but they still want yeah. to have access to, to good data. And, and I think Neil Patel's a fucking genius and, uh, and that Uber suggest tool of his does super well. And so I, I just wanted to do that, but the rank, that rank track tool is, uh, is pretty cool. So yeah. actually, in fact, you are, you were working for Ahrefs, betrayed them for seven, <laughs> and now you're putting them both out of business okay, so with listen, the revolution listen. you need to No, no. So this is crazy. And I hope, I really hope that no one at Ahrefs has ever listens listen to this <laughs> because this is, this is what I find so fucking crazy because it's like, so when, when I was working at Ahrefs, <clears throat> I was working with, with them. I was never at Ahrefs. They offered me a full-time position. They were like, we'd love for you to come on full-time as like a, 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 the YouTube host or whatever. And I was like, what does that entail? And they said, well, cause I said, could I continue working on my stuff? And they said, yes. And then I asked, is there like a non-compete that I have to sign? Like, can I work on like, I didn't exactly say what I was doing, but I just said, could I work on like other SEO projects? And they said, I couldn't, they said I would have to stop, uh, especially like an SEO tool. That's like a direct competitor to them, but obviously it's like different leagues, but still. So, so that was like my main thing. Like I couldn't, I didn't want to sign on full time. They only wanted me full time. Sam, Sam, oh, he was like, we're not going to do this like freelance thing where we pay you per video so on. But then the thing is that I've been talking about clicks now for a while on my channel. And then Semrush still were like, oh, you should come on and make videos. Even while I'm like promoting my own tool. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what's well, going on. It's a on, different price point. Yeah. Different so audience. They probably also think that I'm like a micro little bitch. So <laughs> it's just like, whatever, you know, like nothing's going to happen. Um, but yeah, that's now, but exactly the thing what is you I'm probably doing. Got a, you probably got demographics on your channel there still gonna grow up to be a self semrush customer right so I yeah think that's absolutely where they'll see it if these guys grow then they might you know decide to to go to a legacy tool or, or later down the line they may not they may stay with you out of loyalty but they you know that could be a play for them i'm just thinking yeah. about it from how that will work from their perspective yeah get yeah, them young no. kind of thing yeah yeah but my my goal right now is just like i want to plaster my face everywhere you know, I just, that's, nice. that's it. It's just like personal <laughs> brand, personal brand. Um, and then, and then hopefully that, that just, that helps my projects a bit come to light a little bit more. What are you pricing it as? Yeah. So I think the cheapest plan is going to be, so Uber suggests, I think is like 28. Uh, I don't know if it's euros or dollars. It's going to be, the cheapest plan is going to be a little bit cheaper than that. So I'm, I'm taking him, dude. <laughs> I'm taking him. <laughs> I'm coming for Neil, dude. He doesn't Neil. know who I am, but I don't care. <laughs> Neil, come on the podcast, defend your position against yeah. this upstart competitor who's going to try and take you out. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see, you, man. Fuck. No, I think um, I think Semrush have actually been very clever with the acquisitions they've made. I believe is it? I believe it's Nick Eubanks that does all the buying businesses for them now. And uh, so, yeah. the Backlinko stuff was a clever deal. People were like talking mm -hmm. shit about that. I think it's a very clever deal to get back. Yes, I think so too, yeah. uh, Traffic Think Tank obviously got a big trusted community there. Um, and just like the way they're doing stuff with influencers, like uh, you and your audience are being able to bring that to a wider, like it's, I think it's a very clever strategy overall. Uh, I think they're yeah. doing well with that. I think so too. And it's interesting Sorry, because... Sam Rush, if you want to sponsor the podcast, <laughs> we... <laughs> Dude, we are I, for sale. I, I actually, I know the, 
I'm one of the people that like runs like influencers and like sponsorships. And so I can definitely send you guys the contact if you guys are interested in that. There you go. Nice. <laughs> I'm your guy. <laughs> so to go back to YouTube, you kind of answered a lot of it to be fair, but I wanted to ask about the difference between having a YouTube particularly, but the personal brand front and what kind of benefits that offers, what doors that opens. You obviously touched on like the fact that it's been so yeah. good. But like what, what do other, when you say you should start a YouTube channel, what kind of things do you envision that helping other people with because of like what's how how has that happened for you yeah yeah you i'll give you i'll give you a really clear example because so to set the scene i my younger brother also has a youtube channel he's he's got like 40 something k subs and uh, nice. he's in the design space he's doing super well and so he started it a year before i did again he's younger than me and i absolutely hate him for this but he's doing super well no i love the guy but you know what it is <laughs> he's super competitive anyway and so I was working at the startup. I was like head of SEO at the startup and we had this massive team and we had a lot of interns coming in. And every single day I was taught, I was, I was like teaching people about like, what's an H1? What's a backlink? Here's how we do link, but you know, all this stuff. And my brother was like, Oh, we should just make a channel. And then I did. And I decided kind of like to optimize a little bit. I learned it like from his mistakes and kind of, and kind of built this channel. So within the first year, I think I maybe hit like, a thousand or maybe yeah maybe like a thousand two hundred subscribers like nothing but within six months so i started getting leads i think maybe within the first like 20 to 30 videos i started sharing the videos every like on indie hackers on the product hunt has a community um on reddit but i got destroyed on reddit people were like who the fuck do you think you are <laughs> so, <laughs> classic <laughs> reddit. Out there, reddit, yeah, reddit, yeah, man. Don't give a i fuck. stay away from it because it's just for yeah. my own fucking sanity basically yeah, self-esteem it's, so, <laughs> it's so crazy and so <clears throat> i get i get all these leads at the time i was still working at the startup so i was like i don't know what to do with this i was, I was just kind of i was like ignoring leads whatever we'll skip over that and then i get this offer from this client in the u.s where they were basically like, Hey, we'd love for you to come on as like a CMO. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, it's like, what? And, uh, basically just a really small, uh, like translation company in the U S there were like three or four people working there, but they were making a shit ton of money. And I'll just tell you guys, they were like, here, here's a contract. Um, you can come on, we'll give you 150 K 4% equity. I had 600 subscribers and it's just like, they're just throwing money. So I, I obviously quit joined the startup. And then started taking clients. And then it was just like this, this money machine that just, it just hasn't stopped, right? Because it's like, once you have one client, then you have results and then you can talk about results and then that makes YouTube better. And then that's referrals. And then it's just like this fucking money machine that, that keeps getting bigger. And so I guess it's like, what, how, how does it help? Like literally with everything, you know, I think the main thing is trust because I, Mm. I had a bit of a, in, in my earlier SEO days, maybe like six years ago, um, seven years ago, maybe I did a lot of like cold email, you know, like, Oh, uh, I saw that you guys aren't ranking number one. I can help you guys with that. You know, like classic, like outreach stuff for clients. And with the channel, everything just kind of switches. Like people come for you, they see you and they're like, no, I want to work with you. And there, and there's no like, Oh, let me talk to you about like this, this client, how it works. It's like, they know, cause they've seen the video. So they trust you. So it's like, when can we get started? It's like, okay, so we're getting, we're literally going from like step zero to step three, because they're just down, they're just ready. And so I think trust is a big one. I think the money is a big one. You can charge more money. That's what I've seen at least, because people, I don't know, they, they see you as like an authority, right? Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I just don't see any like negatives. <laughs> I like, it's just... It's all positives. Have you seen that, Jamie, with, with your Twitter? Have you um, seen things the, just kind of happen like that? The lasso deal came about because of Twitter. It definitely there wouldn't have happened if not. So uh, the, when when Andrew first DM me to talk about like heading up the marketing, it was because of what he'd seen of like what I'd done on Twitter. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's uh, it's not YouTube, but it's an example of deals. Like uh, uh, the it's My insane, Content yeah. Pal deal came about because of that. I wouldn't have had equity in My Content Pal unless I, I met Craig off Twitter and spoke at his event and stuff. Um, we met on Twitter. Yes, I wouldn't have done Sammy's deal. We wouldn't got involved with the project if it wasn't for that. So it's uh, yeah. yeah, I can. I, I don't think it's. Um, I think Twitter. I think YouTube's more powerful because it's more visual. I think people trust faces more than they trust an account. Yeah. Um. So I think that it's even more powerful and potent. I I should do more on YouTube to be honest. Like I, uh, yeah. this is, which leads perfectly into my next question, which is when we dropped the programmatic features of Lasso, 
we built yeah. it so you could uh like programmatically add lasso blocks to stuff with wp all import and i was like okay i'm gonna start a new new site and create this like test video and uh, show it being done to try and advertise it it took two days of just like complete focus to make yeah. a pretty like mediocre eight minute video how do you, how long does it take you to put this together what's the process and how can you do this without just fucking ripping your hair out no nah, dude I, I rip my hair out every week <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> i wish i could tell you that it's not like that but but it is uh no i mean to be fair you you get good at it, right it's just practice it's um it'll probably take me two days to make a video first day like i'll do research i'll write out the script there's people that my younger brother for example he'll just like completely like he'll have like bullet points and he'll just be like and this and that for like 10 minutes and it's like i, I can't do that i need like a bit of a script and to read through it um but yeah, yeah, around two days. The interesting thing is that the working with, uh, sorry, and I keep just like name dropping, but when I was working with Sam for the Ahrefs <laughs> channel, it's like, it's like a different level of intensity to make those videos. And it's like, it would literally take me two weeks to make one video with, with the Ahrefs channel. And it's because they have such minute, like attention to detail. It's in, minute, you know, it's not the right word, yeah. but like such yeah. like extreme, yeah, uh like attention to detail for like literally every single word it's like how do you, do you know how this word is going to sound to maybe a beginner in the you know it's like everything is so careful so calculated and that's why the channel's so big right they they think of absolutely mm. everything to be fair though I, well i don't know how did your video perform how did it go it's got like 600 views okay and thumbnail was it was it a good thumbnail uh, I think that you'll find lots of ways to improve the video okay. and the thumbnail if you <laughs> set like 10 seconds <laughs> on it. Like it's a, it was like also, um, I wrote the title as like how to do programmatic with lasso and WP all important. So the only okay. people that are going to find it are specific searching for that. If I just yeah. called it and I can still rename it now and see what happens. If I just called it like how to create 10 affiliate <laughs> articles in an hour programmatically, I'm sure it yeah. would have done more if it was a more like a wider audience targeted thing. So there's definitely a lot to improve yeah was this was this under your channel or the lasso channel or yeah it's on my channel your channel i need to do more on youtube clearly yeah, yeah it's mad it's mad i'm like four five four for five i didn't know five videos in now um but you can see the growth it's tiny but you can see it it's like you keep the consistency up every yeah. week is bigger than the last it's <clears> fucking <throat> slow but yeah you're like okay cool it's going up i'm getting more subscribers even though it's like a two or three you're like okay cool this is we yeah. i've got four this week two last week so yeah yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's one of the things that, that i talk about with my brother a lot um that i think ali abdal talks about it you guys know ali abdal massive yeah. youtuber yeah he says it's the the strategy to youtube to get to 100k is a plus consistency b plus effort so fucking like literally unless it's the fucking end of the earth get a video out just get mm -hmm. a video up every week every week just like a fucking robot it's not going to be the best video of the world every single week but maybe one week it pops off maybe one week you get a crazy client maybe one you know it's like it just it just builds it just builds it just builds it's like everything right it's like consistency um, what's an example of um one of the minute details that ahrefs have because i'm like i don't know what i'm missing out on quality wise until i know the things to improve so i'm curious yeah so the the kind of main thing behind the hrs videos is flow right to have this like obsession with flow and i think i to be fair i think that's like sam's like genius it's like he really understands how well things flow and ha like how to add in the hrs pro uh, product like because at the end of the day you're watching like a seven minute ad and mm -hmm. it's just like you're extremely entertained you're learning a bunch and it's like really well done all the animations everything it's it's phenomenal but then it's the flow. It's like he will hook you in at the start with some problem. He'll give you a really good example. And then boom, you're deep and you're like four minutes deep. You don't even know what's happening. And he showed you like four different sections of like an Ahrefs tool. Um, so it's like really, really uh, extreme attention to like the flow and like, okay, so this sentence doesn't really connect to this first, se first sentence that we have up here. Something kind of like broke down. And so it's like constant like um, corrections, which is obviously super frustrating when you're like on the other end trying to make that, um, make that script. But, but I think that's what like really sell it's like, it's attention, right? At the end of the day, that's really what mm -hmm. works on YouTube. Um, so maybe it's that, maybe that that's also something that, that you could work on. 
Um, I'm experimenting at the moment with like the story format. So trying to get yeah. that hook, that great intro, and also making sure that you feed them something so they want to stay and, the, and watch until the seventh, yeah. eighth minute. So you know, you tell them that that's when you're going to tell them what's going on. But they now they're in and they watch the whole thing. And the one I did it on like is three, four times the amount of views. So it just goes to show, man. So yeah, yeah. I'm working on that. It's 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 so it's so interesting, and I, I love jumping into new things like this. Like, yeah. you know, I did Twitter for a bit. Felt like I'm like, okay, cool. I know how that works now. So you know, and then I'll come back to it in a bit. I do like waves on stuff, but tw- with YouTube, I knew that I was like right. You know, this has to be lifetime, 500 yeah. videos, let's go. And um, so <clears throat> yeah. you got to be ready, man, for sure. Yeah. I wanted to ask yeah. you about your SaaS, though, because obviously yeah. it's very data driven. And yeah. one of the big things, as we all know, is that the data inside of these keyword tools, even your address and send rushes are slightly skewed um, to what perhaps reality shows us. How are you trying to combat that uh, as best as you can? It's a, it's a great question. Um, I think that it's just, it's a pretty big struggle, I think, for, for, for most tools. And, and to be fair, like, I think the tools have gotten a lot more accurate over time, obviously, like they're doing um, pretty sensational. So what I try and do is, when I'm building this tool, I'm trying to compare myself to Ahrefs to SEMrush. And then yeah. kind of on a last front to a real, um, to like one of my websites or one of my client websites. But it's really difficult. It's like, re- like a lot of these, like the way that they're getting a lot of this data um, is by buying a bunch of other data or maybe, I mean, Ahrefs and Semrush at this point, they, they've scraped and crawled absolutely everything. Um, so I don't have, I don't have a good answer. It's just, <laughs> it was one, a tough one. one. Of, I don't, I mean. Yeah. One of the things that I'd like to do is, is as people sign up to the tool, hopefully as it, as it grows and as it does better, um, start to take some data from maybe like Google search console, compare mm-hmm. that type of data. Cause that's as accurate as we're going to get. Right. Um, so try and compare and contrast and see if there's some type of relationship there that maybe the data that I'm getting is exaggerated by like a factor of two or something like that. Right. And then kind of fix that over time. But at the start, man, a lot of this data, it's not going to be extremely accurate. Right. But for a beginner, it doesn't have to be that accurate. Um, for, for Ahrefs and SEMrush, obviously you have that, that necessity for it to be like, okay, if, if my website's getting hundred K a month, I don't want to see that it's getting, that it's actually getting 700 K a month on Ahrefs, right? It's just like, it kind of messes up your decision-making, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're way more conservative, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I I can't tell you, you told me, but, and this is just a conspiracy until it comes out. (laughs) Apparently Google search console is going to get fucked by SGE because it does not report and show any of the data. And so we're just going to have enormous ghost holes in there from then. Uh, And it's not going to get fixed and they don't plan to release it fixed. Fuck this dude. (laughs) So done, dude. (laughs) I'm so done. How does that make sense though? Because it's a report. Like, how does that make sense? They've just built GA4. Surely they're going to have to show this data. It's, I'm not allowed to tell you how I know. And it might you not be true. Little... But there's someone in Google who had a bit of a moment and told someone who told me that there's going to be enormous holes in the data once SGE comes out because it is not captured in GSC for anything SGE related. I'd be interested to hear about the US guys because they've got SGE now on a lot of the US. It's, it's like literally there, you know, Spencer and um, Jared talk about it a lot. It's, they've, it's just, um, what's it called? Uh, you know, default now for them. So I'd be interested to hear what that means for them, whether that's showing holes. As yeah, far as I know, well, it's not been widely released, like for everything though. Still yeah, I think it's coming out in December. Yeah. I think, I think it's still the, the testing phase. That's crazy though. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that, Jamie. I'll be honest. I don't. I don't. I don't like that. But uh, <laughs> no, I don't like that. It's one it's, of more yeah, positive shit. note. Um, when you're doing topics for YouTube videos, yeah, uh, how do you decide which ideas you're going to make into a video? How far ahead do you plan them? And how do you kill ideas <laughs> that like you all like you know test and see what deserves to be a two days worth of time and kill your th- kill your babies that don't quite make it to, yeah. to the end. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, for me, I like to break down the videos between like 
search based videos. So, okay, e commerce SEO, I know a bunch of people are going to be looking for that. And then things that, that I think the audience would really like, like, for example, I'm now doing a parasite SEO case study. So I bought a bunch of parasite uh, articles and I'm just waiting to see how they rank. And I, I did a video recently with Charles, Charles Flo, and um, about parasite where like he broke down everything and it did super well. So just based off that, I'm like, okay, Parasite's going to do well. People love case studies. People love to see results. People love to see like the green arrow going up, like, oh, traffic, <laughs> keywords, you know? It's like, I hate to be that guy, but I have to add a little fucking arrow every fucking time. Traffic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This will make you rich. You know, it's like, oh, those... yeah, yeah. In one hour. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. For free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, so it's kind of like the division of, is this search? Is this like more browse? Like, are people going to like it because the topics like trendy, like ChatGPT in its early days, which is like, you make a ChatGPT video and it's going to get like 10K views easy. Um, so yeah. And then, then it's just, it's basically that those two ideas. It's like, it's either search or it's either a topic that I've, I feel like, um, they'll, they'll like, but obviously not every video is, is a success. Yeah. And Try so, um, for the company that you mentioned offered you this great job like are yeah. you still doing work with them now or has that come to an end no no that came to an end um which is actually good because it was just it was too much of my time for at the end of the day it was a job right it was a job and and uh and i was like tinkering on a bunch of other things while i was doing the job and i was still getting results for them and things were great but they yeah they just saw that like i wasn't as in as i should have been and again, the money was great for, for the time. Uh, but, but luckily the, a lot of the clients that I get are a lot, a lot of them are from the U S so, so yeah, so people just kind of dump money regardless. Um, but yeah, I did, I did lose that, that golden goose of a client. Yeah. <laughs> You've kind of set yourself up for like a really cool runway trajectory here. Cause you can, I don't know what your plan is probably should ask you actually what what is your plan but uh like <laughs> when you when your um your your youtube is just continually going to feed into your SaaS, and then you can scroll back your client base or even grow your client base to more higher paying ones i imagine and that's kind of giving you this kind of moat around your product but equally as well your personal brand yeah that's exactly it that's exactly it that's actually it was it was kind of the reason that i started with the personal brand because as i was saying before that I was really struggling to, to build products before having a brand, like just launching a business, just like on its own, complete, like no marketing, nothing behind it is so difficult. And maybe that speaks to like, maybe I'm not a good product builder or maybe I'm like a better like audience builder. Um, but my idea has always been like, I'm building this for X reason, right? So obviously you give value and then Gary Vee talks about this all the time. It's like, you give value for an infinite amount of time. And then one day you're like, by the way, guys, go buy my fucking course, or, you know, something <laughs> like that. Um, and so that's always my, my idea has always been a SaaS. My older brother, actually, he, he runs a, a fitness app and uh, it's called Heavy. You guys might've heard of it. Heavy app. Oh, man, sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know exactly. What yeah, I it's, they've, they've got like, they've got like 2 million plus users, doing super well. They got like a team of like 15 people work. Anyway, it's crazy. And so, I've Mate, seen... I get hit with the fucking ads like hard. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a big deal, dude. They're doing super well. But the the reason for the SaaS more than anything and, and more than like a niche website that I've always like been super interested in, but like I've never had like the balls to like go fully deep into like building a massive website is that I've just seen my older brother just like kill it with SaaS and just like MRR. Just that number in my brain, it's just like I can just see my brother just you, like this chart is just going up. And so the idea has always been like personal brand, build an audience, build some type of SaaS, and then uh, retire. No, not retire. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, but anything else, you know, just have, have some type of funnel where it's, where it's not as painful to like market it. And there's people that are listening and there's people that are interested and give you feedback. If it's a shit product, then fuck it on to the next one, you know, but you still have kind of like that base of people that will, at least hear out what you're what you're building you know nice and so with the uh the client work that you do now obviously you yeah. balance that with the personal brand building and things like that how do you approach a client site versus 
how you approach your own niche site? Like, what are the differences in philosophy, risk averseness, uh, strategy? How do you well, like, how do you differentiate, and how do you see? It? Yeah, yeah. I think I think the main thing is just risk, right? It's just um, a lot of these clients. For some reason, a lot of these clients are startups. Like, they're small companies that that have a lot of money or that they're, they're well funded. Uh, maybe not as well funded now, but maybe a couple of years ago, a little bit better funded. Um, and so it's just risk. I think on my personal websites, like I'm down to maybe try and build some PBNs, maybe, uh, I don't know, just stuff that like, if it, if it goes down, it's cool. It's an experiment, something for YouTube, whatever. But for clients, I'm very like, all right, let's get the best person in the world that knows about translation for passports to write this article, make it the best fucking article that exists optimize the absolute living shit out of it, get the cleanest back. Like I'm very, very clean just because I don't want anything to happen to the client. Obviously I care about the results. I care about um, the client staying on as a client. And so, and so, yeah, I think it's just risk. And, but the strategy is basically the same, right? At the end of the day, it's like, it's content, it's backlinks. Um, nothing too crazy. I don't think. Yeah. And how do you project manage it whilst also balancing everything else you do? Like what's like, what would you recommend to any aspiring client agency SEO who wants to build up a client base yeah. and do so without working 120 hours a week? How do you yeah. manage that effectively? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So the easy answer is that you're going to be working 120 hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The Well, I actually decided to a short while ago to kind of cap the clients. Like I can't, um, I just couldn't say yes to anything else. And so actually I'm now starting to work with, um, do you remember Jules? Yeah. You know, Jules, Jamie. He's a great guy. Yeah. I've, spent, yeah, I've yeah. met him in York and in uh, Birmingham. Yeah. 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 And so in Manchester. Now, I see Jules yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah. That guy's everywhere. So now I'm working with Jules. So basically my, my advice is to partner up with someone who can help you with the workload. Um, partner up with someone who Jules also has like an insane amount of SEO experience and is probably better at SEO than I am. Like that guy has, I don't know. He's worked with like a lot of really big clients. Um, and so now we've kind of, we're kind of doing a bit of a partnership. We're trying it out with, with a couple of leads that are coming in because like, I can't take any new clients, but it's like, am I going to just ignore money on the table? It's kind of a bit of a moral issue that I have. But, uh, um, so yeah, so partnering up with someone who, who can do the other side of the work. I was also uh, sending leads to other agencies for like referrals for a while. Um, but it's not the same, especially when you're building a personal brand, like people want to work with you. Like they want to see you on the call. They want to know that you're part of the work and you're part of the strategy. It's tough because then you send them to like a random agency and they're going to give them like just this like cookie cutter SEO strategy. And they're going to be like, Oh, we're just like another, another client here. Um, but no, partnering up with someone that you trust is, is really good. It's hard to find that person. And Jules is a, I, I, I don't know. I think it was like, it was meant to be for us to like meet in, in Birmingham because we like, we sat down, we like spoke for six hours and just got on the phone and, and, and it, and it worked dude. And, and he's really good. So, so looking forward to see how that works. Mm, big up Charles for connecting the, yeah, the, dude. the system in there without, without burning in. That doesn't happen. The, the no, partnership no. of dreams doesn't come together. Yeah, no, it does not. No. Nice. So Jules yeah. does a lot of the execution on your behalf then for the clients. So right now, yeah. So right now we literally, I have a, we have a call in like in an hour with a, with a lawyer in the U S and it's literally like, he's basically going to just develop the strategy. He's going to do everything. I just kind of show up and, and if I need to do anything, I will obviously, but I think I'm just more like the person who brings the leads and he will kind of, he will execute. Um, and so it's like, it's perfect. He wants more work. He's building his own, he's his own thing. And, and I can't do anymore. Right. So it's a it's a solid it's a solid partnership nice nice and so yeah. um when you're doing your own sites now how do you when you how do i phrase this when you're approaching a new build how do you approach it differently to a uh, in a client i guess you're looking for quick wins so you can show the report you know you're kind of beholden yeah. to like their perception of the work beyond what you know you've done absolutely new sites you're only trying to impress yourself and you can take longer gaps with the wins because you know what you're doing is right how would you therefore like how, what are you prioritizing when because a lot of the people listening to this are going to be new site people when you're doing a site what are you prioritizing what are you focusing on what what are you doing that maybe not enough people are thinking about that they would learn from this i think one of the things that, that i've been looking for recently is just programmatic opportunities um that's something that that i kind of got introduced to recently because of not recent, maybe like more more than a year ago, but Ian, uh, I don't know what his last name is, Ian but Nuttall. he's the guy. Who's, 
yeah, yeah. So the, yeah, that guy is just uh, absolutely killing the programmatic game, and he keeps yeah. showing like examples of random websites that are like programmatically built websites that are making I don't even know how much money. And so I'm always looking for like those type of opportunities. I think that building in those type of niches are really cool. Um, it's also like if you know how to code a little bit. I think he also shows you how to do it in, in no code or uh, without coding. But because of because of my slightly a slightly to medium technical background, I can build those websites and, and I like building those websites that are like, okay, I, this website needs to have 100,000 pages by the end of the month. Like that to me is really cool, right? And it's like finding those um, those random niches where it's like colors or like different paint yeah. colors and like, it's so random, but it's just like, man, to it's me it's incredible. Wild, it's incredible. Um, it's like one, it's like ones on like metal walls and all different types of these things. And they're putting in like, you know, half a million page views a month and just yeah. absolutely cleaning up on ads. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so stuff like that, to be fair, I haven't built like a proper niche website. Like I'm going to write content about like the gardening niche in a very long time. Um, which is sad because I think I'd like to get back into it. Maybe not now, maybe now's, now's not the best time, but, uh, but dude, I, I see all the niche site stuff on Twitter and I absolutely love it. And it's just it's just crazy that you guys are making so much money. <laughs> I actually had a record month this month. I haven't told did you about it or nothing. Yeah, we I mean it'll be October by I say this, but we did like 75. <laughs> it's like, what the hell, dude? It's not nice, man. The... Yeah, so not inspiring. Me, it's, me, it's super inspiring, dude. I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. Only yeah, like but when you look at Jay's, like. Jay's sites without like going, telling anyone what they are, because you know you can't do that. Um, yeah. you, they they're just so well thought out, and like so, it's a testament to you and the, the niche that you're in. Obviously, it's just uh, you know you deserve it because they're the best in that space. You can go and look yeah. in the space; you can't find a better one. So yeah, I actually I've, yeah. I have a question for you guys because. One of the things that, that kind of bothers me here, oh, let's, let's shoot on the niche site space for a bit. Yeah, all right, let's go. <laughs> it's no, one, one, of the things, one of the things that bothers me a little bit about the niche site space is that like, there's a lot of people that are building websites that like, there's no brand. There, it's just like, yeah. it's literally like yeah. a basic WordPress template, which is fine, dude. Like it works. It works. Like I saw a couple of websites in, in Birmingham, people were showing them. And it was like, holy fuck, this looks like this is gnarly looking. Like it was just literally yeah. like, I don't know what the what the what's like the base WordPress template. I forget what it's like twenty one something. Oh, 2021 or two. They think they yeah. do one each one each year, right? Yeah. yeah. So it was basically like that with like a hundred and fifty blog posts, and it was making I don't know how much, not a lot of money, but it still it was making money. And it's like, mm -hmm. how important is it for you guys to build a brand? Because for me, it's like, I want to build something that's like long-term, I can come back to, I can sell it maybe. I don't know. I think that's what makes money long-term. You know, it's like brand. It's not just like content, content. Sammy, you'll know this. Sammy's much better brand than me. He's built bigger, like better brands than me. So he's yeah. the one for this. He's, if you see his site, it's an amazingly branded site, in my opinion. Thanks, man. Look, I there's a place for the gnarly... 2021 WordPress Generate sites. Press, everything the like, same. Like, <laughs> you know, it, it is, but the longevity of that exactly. is to be questioned, right? You know, that's very easy for Google to come and sweep up and go, thank you very yeah. much, goodbye. I'm now going to rank the guy who's putting in time on YouTube, building a podcast, building yeah. up social signals around it. For me, I feel like the brand will live on no matter what and what format that then ends up being in, whether or not Google's the lead traffic driver in the future or another channel is, um, then you need to be playing in those fucking spaces, man. Like, it's really that simple. And uh, every, I say it to Jay, like, we go on some of the biggest people's sites in the industry, you know, when we have our little weekly catch-up calls and we, we're chatting. I'm like, look at this fucking site, man. This is dog shit. And then they're, like, exactly. numbers, <laughs> exactly, like... Dude. They're like putting up numbers like 100k <laughs> months, and I'm like, what the fuck, man? How is this site doing these numbers? Because the layout's awful, the pictures are wrongly formatted, the content's wide and reviews. small. They're not even great reviews, but this person's posting 50k a month bank, and I'm like, whoa, like, okay, cool. That fills me with tons of confidence because I know that I'm coming correct with my confidence, my content, my branding, my custom graphics, podcast videos, you know, YouTube's, etc. Mm -hmm. So 
in the end that wins out or does it who knows i might be talking shit but like at the end of the day brands seem to be the ones that google and everyone else seems to gravitate to long term right yeah. For context, he's not speaking about anyone on news site Twitter. This is someone else that we found and independently verified. Like, <laughs> so no one like who's listening to this who's on things okay. that we're talking shit about them. This is not someone on Twitter. We're not talking shit about anyone that well we are, but um but <laughs> they, they don't know that. <laughs> and if you think you're if you think your site's shit looking, like do something about it, man. Create a homepage which is enjoyable to come onto and not a blog role. Like you've all got these URLs and brands, you can create something out of it. Don't be lazy. I know you and if you're creating bank uh spend a couple k and get a fucking developer to do it for you like just put the effort in uh and i feel like you get paid off for that eventually i spent 15 grand on the theme we have at the moment and even then like there's a lot more work we can do uh it can be done better um i know a lot of things especially the, the home page we can improve but the layout i'm more happy with but it costs a lot to do that yeah 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 to me it's just it's just crazy that there's people getting away with all that dude it's just <laughs> literally like the fucking gnarliest like no about page like no like doesn't give a fuck you know it's just yeah it's a blog it is literally a blog <laughs> yeah 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 no i know you know again they keep saying eat and then suddenly they post the update yeah. and they're like hey my site's gone up 30 percent in traffic you're like what yeah. the fuck yeah. man yeah. what do i need yeah, to do like yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah hey, for like, real I, I respect it. Listen, it's like, it's a grind and, and oh, yeah, uh, for sure. You, making money, got, make money, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. You're making money. I, I respect it always a hundred percent, but it's just crazy. It's crazy to me like that, that, that there's stuff like that happening. Um, cause, cause I think in, like, I like to see things like more in like the startup world, like building like a, a small company or, or, or something like that. And it's mm -hmm. like, you can't get away with that. You know, it's like, if you have terrible design for any type of small company today, it's like, you're fucked. You know, it's like the, mm -hmm. The barrier to entry for design is super, super high. Um, but anyway, niche yeah. site is a, it's a different world. Yeah. It Would is. You, yeah, um, it's like its own ecosystem, isn't it, really? Yeah. Would you get back into it? For example, would you do like an example site to then demo the tool on like how you do keyword research for a new build with your SaaS tool and then use that for the, the promo videos, how you track your keywords? how you do the various other tools that you offer and then use that as a project that gives you an excuse to get your teeth sunk back into the Nissan game whilst also doing the content marketing promo play. You literally guessed. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, the, it's something that's planned. It's something that's planned. Nice. Yeah, What's the niche? Yeah, it's a great play. Uh, <laughs> What's the URL? <laughs> so, <laughs> What's your best playing affiliate program? <laughs> do you want so that to, so I, haven't, I haven't decided yet. But it's either going to be, and I'm, I'm targeting, I want to target Spain just because I see a lot of um, opportunities in Spanish. Uh, it's either going to be in health or gardening. <laughs> I said gardening before I was making fun of it, but, uh, but uh, there's just something that I found. So, uh, so we'll see. Nice. Ah, oh, mate, gardening is enormous. People think, yeah. oh, I'm not going to touch that now because Kevin's killed it with ethnic gardening. But, mate, like yeah. the different styles of gardening is just, mate, you couldn't even yeah. touch. You, you could stay within one of those tents and be very, very comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see. But, but that's definitely it's definitely in the plans because I think those those are the best type of videos, right? Again, it's like people just want to see, oh, how is this guy growing this website? And then you just shove the product in their face, obviously with flow. But uh, but uh, but yeah, that's that's a plan. Well thought, dude. That's a good that's a good thought. Well, there we go. <laughs> I, I, whenever I demo a new lasso tool, I'm like, all right, I've got to create a test site now and show you this. But you can actually yeah. do one and like yeah. have the whole flow because it's, like for lasso, it's great. Um, but it's, it serves a specific, right. Your, you, your tool can take them through the entire journey. Lasso can as well in that it'll, it'll help them earn more, but you can go from before a site has been created and get that whole journey and adventure through there. Whereas Lasso yeah. is for sites that have already been built. So you can actually just like that whole, like starting from zero beginning thing that people love because they want to vicariously see something come from like the, the, yeah. the, the, the embryo to, to go for it. And you can do that with your tool. So it has a, a good synergy for the content. Yeah, dude. No, it's a phenomenal idea. Yeah. I'm it's like a public guy. case study for both your personal brand and your tool. Like, it's a win-win. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No pressure, but you actually have to make it work now and get subscribe to this channel. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, dude, too much pressure, dude. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Oh man, that's how we do. I know, like, I know you. If you're uh, not putting ourselves under pressure, then what are we doing? Yeah, yeah. I know you got. Um, I know you got a call, so I won't keep you too long. But um, just one last one. I'm curious about. In fact, I've got two questions, but I'll take. I'll ask the other one after this. Um, when you're doing either your own client work or your own sites, how are you build in links? How what's the, what's the strategy, and how have you refined that over time? Because it's a question that a lot of people want the answers to, and I think everyone yeah. can do content, not everyone can build links, and so it's more. Of yeah. A, uh, a, a skill that people want to get the, the lowdown on. Yeah, one thing. So basically, kind of like the same way that everyone does. But one thing that I like doing with clients that works extremely well is that I get a lot of clients in like the service niche, service businesses. Uh, this example of the translation client is um, is a perfect example. And so one thing that that we do is they literally would have like. And I'm not kidding, like maybe hundreds of thousands of people like adding like five star reviews. Again, they were providing this like phenomenal service. And so one thing that I suggested is why don't we reach out to these customers, see who has a website? Because it was like a mix of like a B2B and a B2C type of business. Um, and we found a list of maybe like it was like five or six thousand businesses that had left this like these great five star reviews. And so I was like, we have the trust already. Like there's no need to write that cold thing like, hey. I love this blog post you wrote. How could, you know, it's like, don't need to go through that shit. Um, literally write an email like saying, hey, uh, we saw your five-star review, would love to collaborate, would love to partner up, would love to do anything, you know? See if you can get some type of synergy going and end up getting a bunch, a bunch of really good backlinks uh, from that. Because not only were the clients, but they were also businesses that had like very specific type of um like authority like there'd be lawyers they'd be uh like immigration companies they'd be like all these different types of things and so that went super well so working so reaching out to clients reaching out to people that have already used your business or reaching out that have uh to people that that like know who you are i think works super well on like the client side of things um i've been doing hero for a bit but i think that hero like the Hero services, I, I like to like outsource things to, to other people to, to help me do Hero. I feel like the quantity has gone down a little bit. I don't know if it's like becoming mm -hmm. more toxic or like too many people are using or it's like becoming like seriously mainstream now. And to be fair, I'm making a bunch of videos on Hero. I made one for Ahrefs on Hero. So it's probably also partially my fault. But like, um, I don't know. I'm seeing the value kind of drop a little bit. I don't know exactly. Maybe it's maybe it's just like me and my personal um, things. But, but yeah, just uh, guest posting uh stuff like that and then on my personal things if i'm if i'm doing any crazy tests again i i still like to build pbns like i still think that that well i'm, I'm seeing it work so i still think it's uh something that, that people should look into <laughs> i don't know if it's like <laughs> not okay to talk about that stuff oh, but uh finished, yeah. but uh <laughs> but yeah but I, but i've seen it i've seen it do do great things and um and then yeah i do remember you talking to me about um yeah, I don't know if it's cool to talk. Maybe we can cut this out if it's not cool. But how you would <laughs> you ended up you ended up buying competitors that were like on the fourth or fifth page and like redirecting them, and I thought that was amazing. You, I've, uh, I I redirected um, a business that operated in my niche in yeah, and then um, sometimes we had the same article, sometimes we didn't, and it would just get redirected in, and uh, because we instantly got a load of domains that propelled that site to grow a yeah. lot over the next five or six months after that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's great. I've been looking at stuff like that. Like I'd like to do some type of like, maybe like mini acquisition like that. I think that'd be really cool. Um, but yeah, nothing out of the ordinary that maybe I think maybe PBNs are a bit out of the ordinary, but I think just the usual stuff like link place, fucking niche edits, like all that stuff. Um, that stuff still works. Right. So it's, <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but we had a conversation works, so. in uh, Birmingham. It was, uh, to be fair, I wasn't really party to this because I'm not as good at links uh, as all the other people that were speaking, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it was uh, like at the end of the James Dooley's and Mad Singers that are like really yeah, yeah. crushes. And um, the sort of conclusion of the conversation was that with Harrow now being so like AI spammed and you know, maybe not as effective as it once was, and a lot of crackdowns on guest posts that are often posts and like, you know, passing zero value off to them, uh, with stuff like that. They ended up thinking like, actually, some of the safest stuff you can do now is PBN links. <laughs> it's like, well, dude, I... <laughs> no, but but that's true. It's like you're building a PBN and you have complete control of everything. Like, I don't know. I, I don't see <laughs> it, 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 like it has to be the highest quality stuff out there right now. Like the amount of, I don't know. There's just so many websites that are just getting slaughtered with like 
I don't know, hundreds of guest posts outreach like a day, you know, it's just like, what's the value in that? You know, at the end of the day, like Google will find it. Google will just devalue it. It'll just, it'll just end up being shit. So, so build PBNs, man. <laughs> 2023, <laughs> 2023, right. it's time to build PBNs. <laughs> We're going to quote that and stick that on the, uh, the, God the shorts damn. for the, the clips for the video. Um, build PBNs. So, Last, last one. So uh, I found out you, who you were because I was looking for a good featured snippet video to give to my team because um, we, were, we were not hitting snippets and we wanted to you know, get those snippets. I know you just made a new one. I need to update it for the, for the, for the new meta, right? Um, if you had one minute to explain to a brand new writer, this is the meta, this is how you hit snippets in 2023, how would you do it? And also I'm adding a second part of this conversation. <sighs> A lot oh, of sites right. are seeing snippets getting removed and they're being yeah. banned from snippets. Yeah. Have you ever what have you ever recovered sites from that? And what were the steps if so? God damn, dude. Jimmy, you gotta chill the <laughs> fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> it's got deep. Um in a minute, how do you get a featured snippet? <laughs> what's, so, what's, the, what's the targeted? <laughs> what have you got? What have you got to do? Sorry, sorry, I couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Do you, like, if you had to just distill it down to like, the key, like five bullet points that someone should really like think about and keep yeah. in mind. Yeah. Um, five bullet points. Uh, structure the page extremely well. So just pepper it down with uh, with headings. Um, add the like what is uh, how to all those little like pre. Uh, sentence starters answer the actual um the the question like like really succinct succinctly uh like mm -hmm. in a short and and uh, concise manner so i think uh, there's a there's a specific number that i'm forgetting i think it's maybe like up to 50 60 words something like that and um and yeah make it a great answer i think that's the main thing it's like don't add any fluff just be super straight to the point and usually it's going to be either an H2 or an H3. I've seen more H2s than H3s. Um, so H2 with kind of like a, the question. So what is SEO with that really concise answer right under it? Um, usually does the trick, dude. It's kind of crazy how well that works. It's simple, but just structuring that page really well um, works. I also like to add table of contents. I don't know. Uh, we used to run like a bunch of different experiments. Um, at the startup that I was working at, and we saw that blogs with table of contents were getting more featured snippets. Obviously, very hard to make any conclusions here, <laughs> but uh, maybe that helps Google the reader understand the page a little bit better. Not sure. Not going to make any definitive conclusions. And then uh, recovering featured snippets. Pff, it's a tough one, man. It's a tough one because you have to it, it it really depends on I hate saying it depends but uh on the competition and on like how aggressive other competitors are towards those featured snippets like if there are four or five different people in line for that featured snippet um it's really tough because once google changes their mind it's like i don't know dude like you have to go above and beyond and maybe there's like i think i saw it once with a client where we lost the feature we had a paragraph featured snippet they ended up switching to a competitor who had a table as a featured snippet. And so what we did is we added a table, but improved the table, and then we got it back, something along those lines. So it's just like, how can you provide a better option, right? I think we added like two more columns or two more rows or something. So it was like a bit more in depth and, and that seemed to do the trick. Um, yeah, hopefully I've answered that. That's a really in, uh, good answer. Yeah, yeah nice. trying my best here. <laughs> yeah, that's really good, man. That's everything I wanted to ask. Sammy, have you got anything you want to ask before we... Uh, no, we, uh... no, thanks so much, man. This has been super fun. And yeah, I appreciate you guys. Take away. You know, I lo I'm loving this podcast because we're just basically, me and Jay are just selfishly learning everything that we want to know and hoping that other people do too. So, uh... <laughs> yeah. This is great, dude. This is great. I had a lot right of fun. On. Thanks, guys. No, thanks, Thank man. Thank you very what, much what, for coming so, on. What's, uh, what's the best place? All of those juicy links. Dude, just on YouTube, man. Just on YouTube. Look up Jauma Ross, J-A-U-M-E space R-O-S. It's a bit of a hard name to pronounce and to, to write, but but I'll be there. I should have named it something else, dude. I should have <laughs> named it like, I don't know, buy links or something. I don't know. Something like <laughs> buy PBNs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm gonna get one of I'm gonna get a make America hat a, a greater hat, and then just go like buy PBN links again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah dude fuck me 
anyway thanks Love guys it. appreciate it we'll stick a Cheers, link man. to Take the uh, we'll, we'll stick a link to the SaaS tool in there as well we'll get you that one oh, yeah. in the footer and if oh, you want yeah, yeah, to try out uh, it will be out by the time that we probably release this one uh, want to try it out you can find it at what's the URL again it's just it's clicks.so clicks.so to find basically your all in one toolkit if you're a beginner and don't want to spend the whole lot on Ahrefs or Appreciate SEMrush it. or one of the available tools um, RIP to uh, Neil Patel's digital marketing career. <laughs> Unfortunately, as a result, he was just collateral damage. I'm sorry, Jam has kind, kind of just instantly done his thing, but here we go. It is what it is, and uh, it's always been. It's, it's always great chatting, and uh, uh, whenever I've seen you, we've had such fucking good fun, and so it's always good to chat. And I'm sure we'll do it again in real life, and maybe we on will. the podcast again soon, mate. We will. Whenever, whenever hey, you guys want. That was lovely. Thanks, guys. Appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Cheers, man. Bye. See ya. Oh, my God.